As President Biden faces several crises at home and abroad, many Americans are wondering if he will or should run again in 2024. And instead of rallying behind him, Biden is only getting lukewarm support from his own party. A growing number of high-profile Democrats outright dodging the question. Watch. You know, if the president chooses uh, to run again in 2024, I mean, first of all, I'm focused on winning this majority right now uh, and preserving a majority this year in 2022. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Do you want to see Joe Biden run for a second term? She's got to go. Yeah, I, you know. Uh, that's an easy question. It's not going to take long. Do you want to see Joe I, Biden I don't run? want to answer that question because we have not. That's not. Yeah, I don't want to answer that question. The president of the United States, do you want to see him run in 2024? I am not talking about 2022. I'm not talking about 2024. <laughs> okay. Too early to say it doesn't serve the purpose of the Democratic Party to, to deal with that until after the midterms. Ms. Maloney. I don't believe he's running for re-election. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Biden's approval numbers continue to tank, with the latest Gallup poll finding that only 38% approve of him and a whopping 59% disapprove. That's a new low, by the way, if you're yeah. keeping score, which we are here on the couch. Kaylee, what do you make of this? I mean, so now you have almost two dozen Democrats, according to Axios, who are noncommittal or say he shouldn't run. Normally, support in your party is as automatic as Kamala Harris's right. robotic hand gestures when she speaks. <laughs> it's always there. It's omnipresent. It doesn't go away. Um, it has gone away. And what is so interesting to me about this is, you know, Emily, first you've got the common sense Democrats, and that's weird for me to say that, but common sense <laughs> and the fact of self-preservation, who say, this guy is pulling lower than Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a kamikaze pilot with him and commit suicide along with the president as he goes down. But then you have this other flank, the progressive Democrats who are leaving him. One in five Democrats disapprove of Biden, and most of them cite that he's not progressive enough. That means he's losing his base. And when you have lost your base, you have lost the ball game. That's all right. And Harris, I loved your cameo in the intro. We were getting such a variety of answers. We have a slow scroll we can put up of just of all of the Democrats who are unwilling to back Biden and all of the different ways that they sort of speak it away. Right. So in your yeah. interview, Mitch, oh, wait, wait, wait. Representative Carolyn Maloney of New York. She was the one who said in that debate with Nadler. Oh, yes. You know, he's not running again. You could have said an egg timer for how long mm -hmm. it took her to hop up on CNN and say, I apologize, Mr. President. I mean, it was a long... <laughs> if you permit me, we actually have that thought. Let's oh, throw let's it up, it. you guys. Let's show the video. <laughs> Sorry. Mr. President, I apologize. I want you to run. I happen to think you won't be running. But when you run or if you run, I will be there 100%. You have deserved it. You are a great president. And thank you for everything you've done. But she still said, I don't think you're going to run. I'm so sorry, but I don't think you're going to run. I mean, it, I want to know what it is, though, that he's doing, that he's not flexing enough to go far left. Mm -hmm. Like, what is he doing? He's, he's stopped pi pipelines. We're, we're not energy independent mm -hmm. anymore. Right. I would think that they would be hopping up and down. This is the man that we elected, so on and so forth. But you know what he did? He went over and he begged for oil in Saudi. Yeah. He kept us on our, on somebody else's oil, which is what set us up for wars. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has taken us back in time. So I understand why people in his own party who are far left are kind of doubting whether or not he's got the street cred to carry out their dreams. Yeah, Because it seems what, whatever faction of the Democratic Party you are a member of, they see the president as a liability. For whatever reason, you know, he's either not progressive enough, yeah. he's, not, uh, he's not common sense enough, he's not present enough. Whatever it is, everyone has their position that he is not enough that he's Just probably outright enough, failing not enough and when you look at the approval rating it's the lowest of any president in this particular time in their presidency since world war ii i mean he set a record <laughs> maybe he did something he set a record they on did. something right yeah. but you know what what's really troubling uh for democrats i believe is the fact that he's lost t african americans by 20 percent young people by 20 percent hispanics by 20 percent and when you look at those numbers those are the core of the democratic constituency yeah. Not only that, you look at the consumer price index, inflation, poor people are becoming more poor, middle class are becoming poor. He's the poverty president. Oh. And then, beyond, beyond just that very, very simple fact, he continues to gaslight Americans. Oh, the economy's great, they just don't know. Basically, they need mental health care. I mean, where is Scary Poppins when you need her with the disinformation board? <laughs> I mean, that's really what, that's what, that's what we are You're right now. It like, it's, it's, 
it's really disappointing <laughs> how, how, how we see him govern and then tell Americans they're crazy. Like, what yeah. is this? Yeah, and here's the thing, Kennedy. So conceptually, obviously, we're all saying the truth. And mm. also statistically, it's my understanding that only H.W. Bush in the past has overcome this level of statistics as it's set up right now for his approval rating as we entered in the Gulf War. So even if you take all of these, these talking points aside, sheer numbers, sheer gambling facts mm. sort of show that this guy probably won't recover. No, I, I hope he recovers from COVID. I do. And I, I wonder about the people, like, do they wake him up and go, hi, Mr. President, um, hope, you're, hope you're well, and I know you're resting. Um, China's about to invade Taiwan, <laughs> and Nancy really went over there. I mean, do they, do they let him know that the news is getting worse and worse every single day? And you look at this, and I know we're going to talk about later in the show some real softballs who, you know, their names are being thrown around for 2024. 20, Don't do it. We need a serious person. Like, I don't like that Democrats funded Republican campaigns for crazy yeah. people they think they can beat in a general. I, I want yeah. the Democrats to run a strong person so if that person wins, we have a strong president. So the rest of the world isn't looking at us going, oh, that, that poor mush-mouthed old man has absolutely no idea what's going on as the world and the country swirl down the toilet. No. That's such a great point, because no matter who wins, no matter who's in office, as Americans, we are rooting for strength. Yeah. We, are, we want our president to succeed regardless. No what matter what the party so. is, for sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.